Howdy folks, welcome to another prop replica build. Uh, so this is my previous Mandalorian related project. Uh, this is the Field Marshal gun from War Machine Paintball. I did my own DIY chemical blackening. And then um, that's what we're going to be doing to these. So these are my Beskar ingots from Saber Academy. Uh, again, I also saw these on Adam Savage's videos. Uh, I, after I saw his, I kind of wanted some of these, but then also um, with him, these are the highest quality that I've seen. They're solid aluminum. They feel heavier than they should be for aluminum. Um, and then we'll get here up close. There we go. These are machined on all six sides the full wraparound pattern. Then they appear to be bead blasted. They have a very, very nice finish, very satisfying tactile feel to them. Um, so they're actually also recommending that uh, that these actually be blackened. They recommended the uh, blackening from uh, Butch Wood Cassidy. The stuff I am using is this Jax aluminum blackener that I used on the gun. Hopefully there's enough chemical agent left here. This has been sitting around for a couple of weeks. Um, it already got used up a lot for the gun. Uh, so we'll see how well it works with these guys. I am gonna go for a kind of a little bit of an aged finish. I will be polishing up kind of just the ridges. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. So first step is gonna be of course to clean these. I'm gonna be using both acetone and alcohol. Uh, acetone first, a little bit stronger, and then alcohol to kind of get rid of any last little bit of oil. Okay. Now when I did the gun, I found that you needed a good stiff brush in order to apply the uh, compound. This is the brush that I use. It's been sitting in water and looks like it's been kind of getting itself corroded. These uh, antiquing compounds and blackening compounds are basically just corroding the surface in a way that results in black. So I'm going to do one, and then we can kind of do an A and B comparison. Alright, this compound's pretty smelly. I'm going to turn on a fan, so sorry about the noise. I want to make sure and be as safe as I can. So it's not blowing straight on the microphone, blowing on me. All right, here we go. What I found I had to do last time was kind of dip it and keep the, well here you can see it happening. Keep the material moving. how that's happening already. It's very interesting it's getting into the nooks and crannies more than the surface. I had a kind of had the opposite effect when I did the gun. Everything on the surface got black and then it was I had to use the brush to get into the nooks and crannies. I'm not going to be worried about any of the top surface blackening. I'm going to go ahead and sand this afterwards very lightly. Try to repolish the kind of top surface. One thing I found is this blackening agent actually uh, leaves a matte surface. So if your surface is polished, it's, it becomes matte afterwards. Uh, in this case, these are already matte. So 
seeing a little bit of a streak effect going on over here. I don't know if it's from the me doing the brushing or not. So I'm going to keep trying to brush randomly a little bit. this into a bucket of water to rinse this off and neutralize it. So before we go and do our second one, let's go ahead and do a little bit of processing on the first one in case we want to change something on the second one. Uh, so these are not, by the way, this is not sponsored. I bought these on my own accord. I like props that are as authentic to the real thing as we can get. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the fan for a minute. So I'm, I'm very attracted to props like this that are all metal and wood. This has a trigger, working trigger mechanism. Um, I have a uh, thermal detonator kit that I bought. Again, Adam Savage video. <laughs> um, but I am working on my own original props. The next one that's coming up is going to be a functional uh, knob and lever from the Mandalorian. I didn't make this though. This was uh, made by a user on the replica prop form. All right, so that's how after blackening, now we're gonna try to do is kind of knock off actually a lot of this blackening. So this looks both a little bit aged, a little bit more like steel. Uh, so we're gonna start off a little bit of a Brillo pad. Uh, this is actually kind of more of a sanding pad. It's not going to take much. This, this finish is quite fragile. Yeah, maybe it will take more than I thought. Let's see here. I actually switch over to some steel wool. I'll try that. Lots of people like using steel wool. I hate using it because I hate the millions of little flakes that come off of it. But this is looking like it's doing the best job of making this look like steel. I do want to actually get in those channels a little bit. Actually, for those, let's use. Let's try a steel brush. So here's the before and after, blackening and steel wool. So you can see why this, some people might get this and then say it's just too darn pretty. Uh, with the, the beautiful milling, and then leave it that way, but that's not what the best car looks like in the show. The best car looks like it's kind of, it looks like a steel. But it's also a little shinier than this. So the next step, I think, is going to be trying to polish up a little bit of the surface. I'm going to switch over to some 800 grit sandpaper. I'm not going to wet it down because I don't know if this is going to come off. It should be waterproof. This was fairly waterproof. But, uh... We'll just see how this goes. I can always re-blacken it if I need to. There's plenty of depth on this etching. So I'm getting a little bit of stuff on the edges. I 
if we get our camera in focus. Come on, there we go. So that's after sanding. So let's do just that on the second one. Let's see how we end up with both. This one, what we might try doing is not even brushing it. Now there's a lot of contamination in this, a lot of used up aluminum and things in here. That might just add some nice cool aging. Oh, it looks like it's going to need some brushing. Try the steel wool. I do really like how dark that kind of makes the logo stand out. <laughs> Alright, that's my hero one I think, I like the overall look of it a lot better. Here's my final result. I am very pleased with these. They have a beautiful shimmer sheen to them while still looking like a piece of steel. Of course it looks like a piece of kind of Damascus, which is why a lot of people have made these out of Damascus steel. Uh, just a little overkill. Uh, but this is the one that had the most accurate pattern. I do kind of wish they were a little bit randomized because obviously they're exactly the same. But they're both incredibly beautiful. I'll, probably what I do is I'll keep one stored like this. Let's keep them in a stack like this. So there we go. Thanks for watching.